Hello friends, today we will be discussing about types of counselling. You know what is counselling, what are the goals of counselling, what qualities a good counsellor should possess. So before we just go to the types of counselling, let us just look at what is the definition of counselling once again. You know that counselling is a process which takes place in a one to one relationship most often, in a confidential setting whereby the interaction face to face and the ultimate goal of the counselling process is to empower the client. In the counselling process, we try to enable the client to identify his strengths, to identify his resources and then make him explore the ways to handle his life crisis. So ultimately, when a client comes to the counselling process, he learns certain life skills he learns certain coping skills thereby improving his ability to deal with the situations. And counselling can take place at different stages. For example, sometimes we provide counselling as a developmental process, sometimes we provide counselling as a remedial process, sometimes the counselling will also be given as a at a preventive level. And the basic important thing that is needed in the counselling process is good rapport building. This rapport building will be established between the counsellor and the client depending upon the trust that is inculcated in the client by the counsellor. So irrespective of whichever mode of counselling you are using, this trust is the most important aspect which has to be given vital importance. Once we have seen what is the definition of counselling, let us see what are the different types of counselling. Different people classify counselling in different types. There are various methods of classifying the counselling process. The first classification if you look at, we can try to elaborate the types of counselling based upon how many clients are involved in the counselling process. For example, if there is only one client and one counsellor, we can say it is an individual counselling. Most often, this is the format which is used across the world. Counselling means most often it is one to one counselling. Most of the personal problems are dealt in this one to one counselling or call it as individual counselling. It can be children with academic problems, it can be teenagers with certain psychological problems or it can be couple who are having adjustment problems or one of the couples taking the help of a counsellor in dealing with the situation. So all these can be the examples of individual counselling. Suppose like if there are more than one client that is called group counselling. In the group counselling there can be more than one counsellor, sometimes there may be two counsellors also. But there is no such limit as to the number of counsellors involved in the group counselling. So this group counselling can be done in a school where a school counsellor addresses students of 9th class or students of 10th class or students of 12th class before the exams regarding the exam phobia or managing the exam stress. This is a classical example or a school counsellor trying to identify certain common problems among the children and then addressing them in a group on the same issues. It could be like improving the self-confidence, improving the study habits or giving the memory techniques or it could be developing communication skills. So wherein the counsellor will be addressing the students on a same issue involving the clients that is here the students where they share their own problems, their own experiences and the interaction goes on. So the students who are not able to come up, who are not able to open up but by participating in it tries to understand that it is not only we who have the problem in, in the confidence levels or problem with the memory or problem with the relationships or communication skills but there are also others who are sharing the similar fears or feelings. So they try to understand and then they try to get the confidence in dealing with it. After attending the group counselling, 
at least some students or some clients may try to approach the counsellor to participate in an interaction at an elaborative level. So, that may lead to the individual counselling again. So, group counselling is mostly facilitating those clients who cannot open up, but who will be benefited by being a participant in that. Not only that, sometimes we also involve family members when we are talking to a client, when the client is a child or when the client is an adolescent and when we feel it is important to involve the family members also as a part of the counselling process. Automatically, the family counselling becomes an example for group counselling. Not only that, even when a couple come for the marital counselling and if the situation demands, we try to involve the family members of both the spouses. This is also an example of group counselling. So, there are two types of counselling here based upon number of clients involved that is individual counselling and group counselling. Similarly, we can also classify the counselling into different types based upon the role played by the client, the counselling can be directive and non-directive. In a directive counselling, the counsellor plays an active role compared to the client and the client listens to the counsellor, tries to follow the suggestions given by the counsellor, tries to follow the directions given by the counsellor and then deal with the situations. Most often, the client may be given certain exercises, certain exploring tasks which enables him to understand his problem. So, the best example here could be a career counselling. We try to give certain tests, make him understand his intelligence levels, his interest levels, what are his personality traits and then providing before him a list of courses that are available and how they are matching, which are matching with, their, with his personality and aptitude, we allow the client to decide which is a better option for him. Similarly, we can say cognitive behavior approach also is an example for the directive counselling. Gestalt approach is also an example of directive counselling. On the other hand, in a non-directive counselling, it is the client who plays a vital role. The client is more active than a counsellor. The non-directive counselling has been recommended by Carl Rogers who believed that the client knows what is his problem, why he has come to the counselling. Not only that, he is also aware of the strategies that has to be used in order to deal with the situations. So, here in this type of counselling that is non-directive counselling, the therapist will only act as a facilitator, will only act as a catalyst of change and it is the client who proceeds forward. Another way of classifying the counselling is based upon the modalities that is depending upon what type of strategy or what type of approach the counsellor is following in his counselling processes. Each modality has its own theory of human development and its own way of working. That is each modality has its own strategies and techniques in helping the client to resolve the problems. So, these modalities are nothing but they are on similar lines to the various forms of psychotherapy. Many of the counsellors try to follow integrative counselling method or integrative counselling type which means they work from two or more different types of counselling to create a better treatment plan for the client as an individual. When we are trying to operate from two or more different types of counselling, this is called integrative counselling. On the other hand, some practitioners work in an eclectic way, which means they try to draw the best of the elements of several different models of counselling while working with the clients. So, one is integrative approach, the other is eclectic approach. Apart from that, we can say 
we can classify the types of counseling based upon the approaches that the counselor is using in his approach towards the client. So, one type of counseling is called psychodynamic counseling. You all know this is a very famous, very classical form of counseling. In this type of counselling, the counsellor's assumption is that past experiences have an impact on the present experiences and the feelings of the client and that childhood experiences, childhood relationships will also impact the present relationships in some form or the other and which have to be relived in order to resolve the problems. It is nothing but all the psychoanalytic principles are translated or practically applied in the counselling process. In this psychodynamic counselling, the counsellor tries to remain as a neutral figure as far as possible, does not give any information about him, but tries to see that the relationship between the counsellor and the client is reflecting the early problems of the client and helping them to resolve it. It is like giving an insight to the client about his early problems and then with the help of the counsellor working through these problems. To do all this, developing a trusting and reliable relationship with the counsellor is very much essential. Another important type of counselling is client-centred approach. It is also called as person-centred counselling. You all know that this is proposed by or postulated by Carl Rogers and this form of counselling is commonly practised across the world. In this particular counselling method or approach, more than any strategies, more than any techniques, he believes three core conditions or essential elements in order to help the client deal with his problems. These three core elements are empathy, unconditional positive regard and congruence. You all know what is empathy, ability to see the other's pain as our own pain. When the client is narrating the problem, instead of belittling the client, we try to see, we try to perceive the client's problem from his frame of reference and then try to convey our own feelings towards him and our own understanding about his problem. This is very much needed to make the client understand that the counsellor is with him, understanding along with him about the nature of his own problem. What is unconditional positive regard? This is nothing but providing warmth, acceptance and unconditionally accepting the client irrespective of his behaviour. Accepting the behaviour of the client, accepting the client for what he is. Even if the client is a criminal, even if the client has indulged into many misdemeanors, but still we try to accept him just because he is a human being. Then congruence refers to the openness and honesty in dealing with the client. To what extent the counsellor is genuine in his relationship with the client, in his dealing with the client in the counselling process? The counsellor tries to be spontaneous, non-defensive, non-judgmental and open to any kind of a criticism even on the part of the client to make him understand the situation. So, the counsellor uses all these things to develop the rapport and also help in making the client go forward in the counselling process. This creates a process of healing and changing in the client's behaviour. Another important type of counselling is transpersonal counselling. This is an integrative and holistic approach which utilises a creative imagination. This approach assumes a spiritual dimension to life and human nature. This approach presupposes that all human beings are interconnected 
with a higher spiritual power and specifically tries to address the bridge between these two that is the human being and the spiritual power. The transpersonal counseling ultimately focuses on personal empowerment. It takes into account the client's past experiences but also looks to the future, what sort of problems that the client may experience and what are the qualities that the client should develop in order to face these difficulties and emerge out of those difficult situations with a challenging spirit. The basic belief of transpersonal psychology is whatever be the hardships of human experience, the core essence, the soul remains undamaged and this is made clear to the client in the counseling process. Another important type of counseling is transactional analysis of counseling. This is postulated by Eric Byrne. The name itself indicates the importance is given in this form of counseling on the relationships. A counselor who follows transpersonal counseling approach or method emphasizes people's personal responsibility for their own behavior, feelings, thoughts and thoughts. This approach believes people can change if they actively decide to replace their usual patterns of behavior with new ones. If the client has decided to change his behavior genuinely, the counselor offers three P's during this counseling process. The three P's are permission, protection and potency. Permission is nothing but giving, enabling the client to frame new messages about himself and the world because the old messages were not helping him in dealing or understanding the people around. When the client is ready to change his behaviors and feelings and especially feeling risky, the counselor is ready to protect him. The third factor is when the client is ready to change, the counselor tries to show his potency by delivering what he has promised during the counseling process. That is, the promise is to facilitate a supportive and constructive environment to help the client to change his behaviors. Irrespective of the type of counselling that is followed, goal setting is an important aspect in the counselling process. So in this transactional analysis counselling, the focus is on uncovering the life scripts, that is life plans, which reflect the messages the client was given as a child. Most often, for all of us, the life scripts which we developed during the childhood as directed by the parents or parent figures that is influencing us a lot. Sometimes it helps us, sometimes they have created an irreparable damage. But now if the client is willing to change these life scripts, the counselor teaches the client to identify in which of the following modes the client is operating at any given time. That is, whether the client is operating from the child ego, that is always replaying their childhood behaviors or whether the client is operating from the parent ego that is copying the parent's behavior or parent figure's behavior or whether the client is operating at the adult level, adult ego that is appropriate to the present situation. If the client is found to be operating from a wrong ego that is child ego or parent or adult ego, the counselor helps him to identify and then change his transaction in the concerned situations. Another type of counselling is existential counselling. In this type of counselling, the counsellor helps us to clarify, think about and understand life so that they can live well. This type of counselling encourages the client to focus on the assumptions they made about themselves, about the life so that they can come to terms with reality. This type of counselling also allows them to make sense of their purpose or meaning in their life. The counsellor focuses the client on how much they already have taken the charge of their life, that is how much they are ready to change their life 
rather than focusing on the mistakes that have happened. Once I have understood the purpose or meaning in my life, I don't want to regret or repent, but I am ready to change and what is the change in me that is more important to the counsellor rather than the mistakes that were done by the client. At the same time, the counsellor also makes the client understand the limitations so that they can make the choices, the new choices which they want to create from a realistic perspective from the options that are available to them. Another important type of counselling is personal construct counselling. This had a base from the Kelly's personal construct theory. This is based on the notion that nobody can know absolute truth, but we only form constructs based upon our own experiences for every situation. But the problem is people can get stuck in the view of the things because we are only seeing from the same construct what we have framed and when we are stuck up that prevents us from living life to the fuller extent because we cannot find alternative ways of seeing the things. We are only seeing from minor perspective, from only the construct which we have done, which we have made rather than looking at the alternatives. This type of counselling helps the people to look at different ways of behaving that may be useful in changing the way they see the world and the people. That is their perception can be changed when they follow the directions given by the counsellor in personal construct counselling. Another important and very commonly known counselling method is gestalt counselling. This is a more directive counselling focusing on a gestalt that is patterns of thoughts, feelings and behaviours that is activity. The gestalt counsellor encourages people to have an active awareness of their present situation and also incorporates communication that goes beyond the work. A very key aspect of gestalt counselling is dramatization or acting out. This dramatization or acting out involves acting certain conflicting situations in the person's life which are really creating a problem or obstacle for a richer life. For example, this dramatization may involve two or more chairs where the client physically take up different positions to represent different aspects of themselves. Another important form of counselling is rational emotive behavioural counselling. This form of counselling helps the client to establish goals in life, at least two goals in life that is to live happily and also to be happy. This form of gestalt counselling helps the client to remove the obstacles that people themselves place most often in their own way and then to identify those obstacles and re-establish a balance between short term and long term goals. Cognitive behavioral counselling is another form of counselling. This is another directive model concerned with how people believe about themselves and how they interpret experiences. The object of this form of counselling is to help the client identify his negative patterns of behaviour, self-defeating or irrational thoughts by replacing them with the new patterns of thinking or using more of the optimistic outlook. In this form of counselling, clients are helped to monitor their own emotional upsets, what is triggering these emotional upsets to identify their self-defeating thoughts and to see the connection between their beliefs, thoughts and behaviour and also to look at evidence against and in favour of these thoughts and beliefs and then think in a way that is more realistic and less negative. 
ultimately here we are making the client replace his negative pattern of thinking with the positive way of looking at the things. In this form of counseling, most often the counselor gives the client certain homework or exercises to do between sessions. So these things involve asking the client to monitor his own feelings, his own behavior and thoughts and then come out of the assumption about themselves. For example, if a person has developed a phobia for going out and then do the shopping, we try to give him an exercise to go to the nearest shop, make an effort to go to the shop, buy at least a small item. Even though there is a resistance, the person has to make an effort and then involve in the task that is given by the counsellor. So like depending upon the complexity of the situations, we try to increase the difficulty of the tasks level. Another important type of counselling is brief solution focused therapy. The name itself suggests that the counselling sessions generally take between 1 to 5 sessions, not more than that. And here, unlike the traditional therapies, the therapist and the client usually do not spend more time on details and causes of their problems. The client is helped to define the goals. And the therapy focuses on how the client can reach these goals, what strategies he can use so that in briefest time he can reach the goal or the solution is reached. This therapy helps the client to recognize his strengths, his resources and also the abilities. This form of counseling helps to focus on what is getting better and based upon this to build a better life. Interpersonal therapy is another form of therapy or another form of counselling where relationships are given more importance. Most often when people have a different negative moods like depression or sadness that may affect the relationships. So in this form of counselling, the focus would be more on working and improving the interpersonal relationships, identifying what are the situations which are making them disturbed and then helping them to bring the improvement in their mood sets. Dialectical behavior therapy is another form of counseling which is based upon the CBT but this particular form of therapy is better suited to the needs of a person with a borderline personality disorder. Generally, this kind of therapy is helpful to the specific needs of the clients like borderline personality disorder. <laughs>